What's up everybody? It's your boy Justin with Herbal Lifestyle. Today we're in the Cave Creek Food Forest where things have been blowing up this monsoon season. It is August 18th and it is just a wonder of green over here. Okay, we're in the, actually in the chicken coop right now. And today we're gonna be looking at the progress of this beautiful food forest. It has been spectacular. We've had a lot of downsides in the summertime uh, during the dry seasons, but now it's been monsoon season. It's been really helping out. Uh, these plants are really coming together and we're getting ready for that fall. And it's been real hot outside right now, guys. So bear, the, bear all the sweat and everything. Uh, so if you end up liking this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you ever want to watch more videos, don't forget to subscribe to Herbal Lifestyle. And if you find this video informational, please share with at least one friend. If you have any stories or questions that you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments below. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Loquat tree. This loquat tree has taken some damage from this summer, but it's coming back lovely. Okay, let's start with the very newest addition to the garden. We have a beautiful uh, bamboo. This, this is known as Dwarf's Buddha's Belly. Okay, uh, this is a really straight stick at the moment. But when it starts pushing off new growth, it really does give you that contorted bamboo with the plump stomachs uh, going in each section. Over okay. here, we wanted to make something for the chickens so that they can enjoy and indulge on. Over here, we have a lot of different types of edible plants that are great for birds. They like the seeds, they like the leaves, they like everything. Uh, some of the stuff I can just see from the top of my head is lufa. I mean, that's pretty much overtaken this entire garden. It's doing real wonders right now. Okay, we got lufa galore. We got lufa galore. Okay, this stuff can feed those chickens even though it's behind the chicken coop. These could always be picked and fed to the chickens. But on top of that, you can eat them too. That's the beauty. That's the so beauty. everything here is always edible, medicinal, something that we can enjoy or the chicken. All right, we made our way outside the chicken coop and now we are in our deciduous section, okay? So this is where we're keeping all of our deciduous fruit. For the main part, we have apples, two of them. And this apple, and we have the golden door set. We have apricots, we have both uh, Katie and Gold Kiss, one or the other. Don't know which one's which at the moment. And then we have five different peach trees. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Behind these peach trees, we want to get some privacy. But we don't want just privacy, we want food with the privacy. So we have two beautiful passion vines. These are the Passiflora adulis passion vines. Lovely to have. All right, as we walk away from the deciduous section, we're walking into a more tropical area. We have some beautiful loquats right here, an avocado from seed. Uh, we don't know how well it's gonna actually do. Over here, we have a beautiful Manzano banana. This Manzano banana was leaning over a lot and uh, I'd find it on the floor after my clients would call me to rush over to come fix it. So we ended up staking it up. A couple weeks later, it's now siphoned out. You know, this banana's not going anywhere. The roots have extended well enough that it's nice and sturdy. So tying it up was great in the beginning, but now it's almost unnecessary. We'll still keep the ties on just in case for any other reason. We have a beautiful grain main banana right here as well. And right underneath its leaf right here, we have a low pot. This is a seed grown low quad. So they're gonna be a big gym, a big juicy or a golden nugget. And we have two trees and they're either one of those three varieties. I'm not really sure at this point. Um, we have beautiful grafted mangoes that have been growing lusciously. A nice raspberry plant. Uh, this is experimental and it's already showing good signs that we're gonna have lots of fruit by next year. Uh, we have a lovely passion vine on this fence. We put passion vine in full sun, we put passion vine in shade. We just wanna see how it performs in different microclimates. Uh, underneath it, we have some Okinawa spinach. This is the bicolor spinach that you get from Japan. Um, beautiful stuff to have. We have an awesome ice cream bean pushing off new growth. This is what we love to see. And another uh, grain name. This one died back, but it's doing great now. 
Uh, so we're real happy about that. Thornless blackberry and some oregano. These Capulin cherries have seen better days, but we had a watering issue that is no longer happening. So they're now getting the water they need. They should bounce back. Over here, we have a mango tree hidden under the crevices of some beans, which have not produced at all this year, but they flower and they're huge. And we're just waiting and look at this ice cream bean. Inside here, we have an annual garden bed loaded. I mean, we got bell peppers galore in here, more bell peppers than I think they're gonna know what to do with. We have a lot of hot peppers about to start coming in soon, a lot of jalapenos and serranos. I don't know if they're gonna know what to do with all that once they start getting cooking. Uh, right here, some newly planted beans and things. Uh, I call that the mystery pack. I just kind of throw in some random seeds and they just grow. I think I did the same thing right over here. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, the eggplant has been producing heavily. These are the black beauties. Uh, we have some okra from seed coming up. And then we have uh, a lot of watermelon in this patch over here. I believe we counted about six watermelon inside this beautiful patch. Just to show you some that's in my face. Here's one, two, and then there's like, like I said, six more somewhere hidden in here. And then I see even more being produced. Uh, lots of tomato plants, still no tomatoes. Uh, it's been a weird season. However, once these start kicking in, they're gonna really start kicking in. They have had more cucumbers than they can eat from this patch. Okay, this patch is now starting to die back, which this patch used to be the real, real luscious one. A lot of strawberry fields kind of still crowded up in here, which is awesome. This dragon fruit is really popping itself out. And then we have this cucumber plant, like I said, about six of them planted here, doing wonders. I mean, lots of lots of growth. Uh, this mango tree is an Israeli red mango. It is a beast of a tree. Look at all that new growth, all that burgundy. Gotta love it. We just recently tipped it and now it's flourishing, getting large and fantastic. Speaking of cucumbers, They forgot one. This one will be mine. <laughs> Over here, we have a beautiful mulberry tree. They have a lot of weight on them and they're gonna need to get pruned soon to maintain them from falling over. Uh, we have another mulberry. These are the Pakistani mulberry trees. And then right over here, we have a beautiful Malaysian red guava. You never heard of Malaysian red guavas? They are a red skinned guava or a yellow skinned guava maybe somewhat of an orange skin. I don't know, I'm kind of colorblind. And then on the inside, real red and very flavorful. And then we have a tropic white guava right here. Gotta love it. Some new plants coming up. We have the pigeon peas. We have the pigeon peas sprouting right next to the beautiful moringas that are taking off, right next to the beautiful mulberry that came back from the tortoise eating it right next to the roselle about to flower and do its thing we're so excited and then squeezing in this fig tree uh, it's been pushing up against it heavily citrus has came back phenomenal i mean we've had some bad citrus deals like with this guy right here but look at all that new growth the new growth is what's killer this guy has fruit on it why i don't know we're gonna take that fruit off it needs it needs the time to recover same with this one, doing wonderful now. Doing wonderful, we got some suckers that need to come off of this one. And then we got this kumquat taking off like a rocket. Clients are hiding these, but they said, look, 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 blackberries already. That is awesome. This garden is less than one year old. We started in October of last year and we're coming along that mark. We're almost there and we're so excited to see how this progresses after October. It'll be this one year mark and it's gonna go through some struggles and then it's gonna go through some comebacks. I mean, we already have fig galore on this fig tree. I believe this is the Violet Day Bordeaux and it's just blowing up. Right next to it, another citrus trying to flower. We're gonna have to cut out the flowers or cut out the fruit once it's done flowering. This is a kumquat that died, but we got the rootstock to survive, so we're gonna graft back onto it. 
And then we have uh, the Ponderosa lemon. Starting to push out new growth, actually. Good, good for you. Uh, the top half almost looked like it was dead, but the bottom half has been thriving and striving. So we're super thrilled about that. This fig tree was not producing before I came here. Now it is loaded, ba-blam, loaded, bow. You know, limes off the yin yang. I hope they're picking these limes because they are starting to look real incredible. I mean, this one right here, you might as well be picked. Same with some of these, they're getting that yellow blush that you want to look for on your limes. Lots of different herbs on the ground, like this peppermint, this uh, lemon balm of some sort. This moringa is doing phenomenal, grew so fast. It's I, It would have been taller than me if I didn't prune it back. Woo, I can speak a whole lot, can't I? We have passion vine galore on these fences. This is what I was waiting for, for that connection point. Look at that. They're meeting each other and saying, how do you do? And that's what we like to see. Pomegranate, pomegranate. These were pretty much almost eaten at one point, but now they're back alive and thriving. We have another fig tree coming up and a sage plant underneath it to just, you know, complement it. And before I step on it, pigeon pea, if you don't know what pigeon pea is, it's Cajun Cajun. Beautiful pea, staple food in, in a lot of countries. And it is awesome to have as we walk past these two beautiful moringas. This one came from hell and back. This one's just been thriving since it's been growing. We have, I think that's like sorghum. Who knows what that is? Uh, these lemons are fatter than fat. Um, and they're happy about that. We got this moringa that also came back from hell. And a passion vine is doing phenomenal. The dragon fruit have seen better days, but they also kind of got eaten in their very beginning. And I'm not gonna walk past this, but we have the black Jamaican sugar cane popping off. And behind it is the Mexican sugar cane popping off. And, and behind that, let's see, actually, we're gonna pass through. This is some spinach that the client planted. It's a perennial spinach, almost looks like papaya to me but it's a perennial spinach and look at those canes. I mean, we're talking juice, baby. I mean, this yard has really popped off in the past few months, past he, almost one, one entire year. You know, it's really hit a significant change from the day we did irrigation till now. So, you know, as we leave the day, we walk away from this beautiful experience and we can see it has been significantly different over this one course of a year of mulching. There has been a lot of work put into this yard within the past year, a lot of hours spent here, a lot of time, a lot of devotion, a lot of sweat, a lot of blood, a lot of tears. So there's a lot of beautiful things that are gonna be happening in this garden within the next couple of years. And the biggest thing is we're gonna see a lot of progression, a lot of change. You probably just saw a nice little pan view of the forest from up top. In the next year or two, when you see a video update of this same food forest, you're gonna be like, holy cow, where'd, where'd all the mulch go? It's covered by green. There's no, there's no visible sight of what's going on. And that's what our goal is. We're really trying to create something super epic, uh, a great experience. We wanna create an oasis in your backyard for you. If you ended up liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you ever wanna watch more videos, don't forget to subscribe to Herbal Lifestyle. And if you found this video informational, don't forget to share it with at least one friend. And if you have any stories or questions, please leave them in the comments below. This is your boy Justin with Herbal Lifestyle. Live your life free and keep on growing.